Hello everyone, Alan Tecchio from Level Fields here with my dog Tigger. Here to answer some questions for Stormbringer from Austria. Thanks for doing this interview guys, totally stoked to be doing it with you. Uh, so the first question is, how can we introduce Level Fields to everyone? Uh, we just released our first record, 1104, on Pure Steel Records. Totally stoked about that. Uh, looks like the reviews so far are really good. And uh, we're just happy to be here. So we're a band, two people from New Jersey, two people from Germany. And we're sort of a virtual band. And uh, just lucky to be making music and doing it our way. So the question is, we're quite active in several bands. How do we manage all of this activity at the same time? It's really not as active as you'd think. <laughs> this project of Level Fields has gone on for four or five years, finally culminating in the release of our first album, uh, which is great. Uh, I'm also in the band Watchtower, but we're not really active. And I'm also in Michael Pond's Silent Assassins. We just played a really great gig, but it's the first gig we've ever played in a few years as well. So it may seem like we're super active, and I do have stuff going on. I mean, releasing two CDs this year myself was great. Michael Pond's second one and Level Fields. Uh, so all of that is awesome, but it's not as crazy and intense as you might think it is. Next question is, I'm from the USA, and two of the guys from Germany. So where do we live, and how does the cooperation work? So I do live in New Jersey. Our bass player, who I played in Autumn Hour with, Clint Arendt, lives in Jersey, not far from me as well. But this project originated with uh, Marco Arendt from Poverty's No Crime in Germany. His brother reached out to me to start a one-song thing, where I kind of collaborated with Marco, and we wrote the song Enough. And that led to writing more and more songs, which led to this record. So how does it work remotely? It's totally virtual. We send tracks online to each other and put our songs together that way. Uh, you notice that we're dealing with very different topics uh, that are not always covered in typical metal. Yeah, for sure. With Mike LaPond, I'm singing about, you know, dragons and Vikings and all kinds of cool medieval stuff. And that's classic metal type of you know, topics. For me, uh, it's more socio-political, emotional, uh, life-based. You know, there's songs that I just get from my perspective on life. And uh, that's kind of what gets me going in terms of writing lyrics. So, what moves me to write is, you know, the things that affect me emotionally. People in my life, you know, uh, different circumstances I find myself in. An overall perspective on uh, life trying to kind of grinds and, and generates my initial thoughts on stuff. And I definitely tend to get a little political and, um, you know, social as well. So socio-political, I guess, is how I would describe what I do. Uh, the debut album, 1104, how did this come about and did it turn out the way we imagined at the beginning? So at the beginning, we really did not expect it to be an album. It was just, again, one song, the song Enough, and that led to the song Disowned which led to, I think, the third one might have been Womb to Tomb. And we just started writing Marco and I back and forth virtually online. And eventually we had enough music for an actual CD, and we were lucky enough to have Pure Steel Records interested in signing us and releasing this. So that's how that kind of came about. Am I happy with how it came out? Absolutely. I think it turned out great. And uh, I couldn't be more thrilled with it. In fact, the guy I know, just as a friend locally, he's not even like a fan of the band per se, just bought it today, and he gave me a rave review. So I think uh, we wrote something really special with this album, and hopefully it'll lead to more great stuff. Uh, the title song, Extra 1104, about a train crash, yes, that occurred in New Jersey in 1925. Uh, I initially heard about this story from a magazine that's a motorcycle magazine called Backroads here in New Jersey. They had written a piece about this train crash and that it would be a destination site uh, if you wanted to take a motorcycle ride and end up in western Jersey where it's a lot of farmland and wide open areas and really good roads to ride on. Uh, that was where it initially came from for me. Then researching it a little bit, I found out that there is a documentary on it. And it's just this horrific train crash that occurred in 1925. And it was a bunch of German people that were from America, but German heritage, and they were traveling on the train to get to Hoboken, New Jersey, to take a boat trip back to Germany to visit their homeland and kind of see where they all came from. Tragically, a number of them died in this bad crash. And to me, it was just kind of 
appropriate that it was German and American, and because the band is half German, half American, uh, I thought it was an interesting thing. Plus, it was very close by, so you might see my motorcycle here. This is just the back part of it. I took my son out on this bike to the train crash site, and uh, that kind of was in the initial writing stages of the lyrics, and just to get a feel for you know where it was and whatnot. That's where that all came from. Uh, as far as becoming the cover of the album, I think it might have just been something we decided on with the label. I don't really remember. We never set out to make it 1104 as the title, but it's, I guess, a pretty compelling, you know, interesting story that relates to the band uh, on a number of levels, no pun intended, and uh, that's probably why that came about. I think the artwork is fantastic, um, so I'm really pleased with the whole record, the way it came out artistically, visually, and sonically. <clears throat> Remarkable is your favorite song. Interesting. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's about Mark Marquez, MotoGP racer, multi-world time champion, uh, major record breaker in pretty much every aspect of the sport. I think he holds the record for the highest speed crash, youngest MotoGP uh, champion. There's a lot of things that are on his, his scorecard there that he's already achieved, and he's super young still. So my kids are big fans of Mark Marquez. I am actually a Valentino Rossi fan, but they loved him so much, and we would sit and watch races together, and they would be rooting for Mark and I for Valentino, and just as the guy started knocking down all these records and just setting amazing statistics uh, that have never been seen before, quite frankly, in the sport, I figured, you know, this guy deserves a song, and maybe it'll make my kids happy. So <laughs> that's where that came from. I'm glad you really like it. That's what inspired me to write it, and... Uh, I am in massive admiration of him, although I'm still rooting for Valet all the time. Uh, who or what is the truth bringer? So the truth bringer was my dear old friend who has now unfortunately passed on uh, thanks to cancer, which has killed way too many people that I know in my own life. Uh, but just a sad, sad story. Michael Trenkert was the truth bringer. He was the guy who ran Metal Blade Germany. He also did a lot of different stuff with festivals in Europe, and he's a well-known metal guy and, and punk scene, too. You know, came up in the punk scene as well before that. Uh, but a great guy that I knew when Hades, my band that I was in, my first band, uh, when we had our second Breath of Life, we were on Metal Blade in the late 90s, and we did three records for them, and Michael was our, our agent there, basically, at the label, helping us get things done. Just the greatest guy ever, but he would tell you what was on his mind quite directly and bluntly, in a nice way, but right in your face. So, I don't know if it's a German thing or a European thing, but he just epitomized that kind of straightforward talk, and I greatly appreciate that kind of uh, talk rather than, you know, pussyfooting around and not getting to the point. I really enjoyed that, but I know a lot of people, it, it's not for them. They want to have, like, a sugar coating on whatever they're told, and Michael Trenkert was not that guy. So, I never referred to him as the truth bringer when he was alive, but... After he passed, you know, again, he's a guy that, you know, you just want to keep his spirit alive. And I feel like I'm doing that right now in this interview, and certainly through writing the song Truthbringer. I'm really happy with that one, the way it came out. Some of the highest vocals I think I've sang ever. And I think that uh, he would be appreciative of it, and from heaven I'm sure he is appreciative of it, uh, even now. So, concerning live activities, are we playing live, and what are our live plans for the future? Well, we don't know if we're going to play live. It would be certainly more affordable for us to do it this way, whether uh, Marco and Theo come over here or Clint and I go over to Europe. Uh, it only costs the label half of what it would cost if they had to fly the whole band. So maybe we'll get some opportunities to do that. I would love to do it, especially overseas. Uh, the metal is just so much more alive over there. Although I just played the Silent Assassin show and it was packed and amazing, but it's a rarity. It's not like it is in Europe. Europe, they're diehard, and you know, thank God for you guys. You don't forget where you come from, and you, you stay true to your music. So I'd love to get over there, but I'd also love to play here, too, because I know a lot of people have bought the record here and would like to see us play live. So we'll see, but there's nothing, you know, set up in stone. So final questions. Uh, Tigger, anything to say? Let's see if Tigger has something to say. Uh, I appreciate this interview. Uh, God bless you guys. Happy New Year. All the best for 2019. And hopefully we'll get some live shows going in the future. And definitely we're already working on about five or six new 
beginnings of songs, and it sounds great. So I think the next level Fields record is going to be even on another level, and that's what we're working towards. So all the best, everybody. Thanks so much. Cheers. Was war der ausschlaggebende Grund für die Gründung von Level Fields? Seit wann existiert die Band? Der ausschlaggebende Grund war ein Song, der heute Enough heißt und den ich damals fertig hatte und ich war der Meinung, für Poverty Snow Crime ist das nichts. Ähm, da es doch sehr nach Non-Fiction klingt und ich dachte immer, das müsste Ellen Tecchio singen. Tja, und eines Abends äh, war ich mit meinem Bruder und noch einem Kumpel unterwegs, wir haben so eine kleine äh, Kneipentour gemacht und da habe ich meinem Bruder das erzählt und er sagte, du brauchst Tecchio, ich besorg dir Tecchio, das ist mein Facebook-Kumpel. Ich selber war noch nicht bei Facebook und so kam eins zum anderen. Mein Bruder hat Tecchio das Lied geschickt, Tecchio hatte Interesse und ja, so ist Enough entstanden und das war im Juli 2013. Seitdem existiert die Band, erst nur als Zweimann-Band, wir waren noch nicht ganz sicher, was machen wir eigentlich mit dem Lied. Und dann kam das zweite Lied dazu, das ist heute Disowned. Und dann hatte ich noch Room to Doom. Und dafür habe ich dann Theo, Andreas Tegler von Poverty No Crime dazu geholt als Schlagzeuger. Und ähm, für das vierte Lied, Remarkable, da habe ich gedacht, jetzt muss da mal ein richtiger Bassist her. Die anderen Bassläufe habe ich eingespielt. Und so kam Clint Aaron von Autumn Hour dazu. Und so ist Level Fields entstanden. Wo seht ihr eure Einflüsse? Was sind eure Idole? Aufgewachsen sind wir mit den Klassikern Kiss, ACDC, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Deep Purple. Später kamen dann Metallica, Exodus, Slayer dazu, natürlich Hades. Dann Allens Band Nonfiction darf man nicht vergessen. Das war für mich damals ganz was Besonderes. Und natürlich Kings X äh, sind für mich ein großes Vorbild. Dann kommen aber auch andere Sachen dazu, die mit Metal nicht unbedingt was zu tun haben. Alan Tecchio zum Beispiel, das wissen die wenigsten, ist ein großer The Cure-Fan. Und ich kann mir durchaus auch mal Schlager anhören. Also alles, was mir irgendwie gefällt, versuche ich aufzusaugen und irgendwie zu integrieren. Als Gitarristen haben wir vielleicht beeinflusst Richie Blackmore, Ty Tabor von King's X. Aber auch mein Gitarrenlehrer an der Uni hat einen großen Einfluss auf mich gehabt. Oder... Das kann auch mal eine Punkband sein, wenn man sieht, dass einer einen ganz besonderen Anschlag hat in der rechten Hand, dass man sagt, Mensch, wie hat er das gemacht? Das würde ich gerne auch mal ausprobieren. Und so versuche ich eigentlich alles aufzusaugen, was irgendwie gut ist, was mir eine Gänsehaut verschafft und äh, das beeinflusst mich sicherlich in großen Teilen. Wie würdet ihr jemandem eure Musik beschreiben, der noch nie von euch gehört hat? Das ist mal eine schwierige Frage und eigentlich ist es einfacher, das anderen Leuten zu überlassen. Aber ich versuche es mal. Also in erster Linie ist es natürlich Metal, der verschiedene Spielarten des Metals mit aufgreift. Also es kann mal in die doomige Richtung gehen, wie zum Beispiel bei Enough oder Growing Old. Aber ich versuche auch mal das ein oder andere thrash Riff mit einzuarbeiten, wie zum Beispiel bei 1104. Das heißt also, alles was uns gefällt, wird verarbeitet, aber einfach gesagt, es ist Metal mit verschiedenen Stilrichtung. Welches Lied auf 1104 mögt ihr besonders gerne und warum? Das ist als Band immer gar nicht einfach zu beantworten, denn natürlich mögen wir alle Lieder und alle sind natürlich was Besonderes für uns. Ich möchte da jetzt nicht Joey DeMaio zitieren, der eine oder andere weiß vielleicht, was er da mal gesagt hat. Ähm, ich kann vielleicht versuchen zu erklären, was besonders für mich ist. Enough ist besonders, denn es war das erste Lied und ich war natürlich riesig erfreut, dass Tecchio das überhaupt einsingen wollte und dass er Interesse daran hatte. Ähm, Disowned hat eine ganz tolle Gesangsmelodie und das Riff finde ich eigentlich ganz gelungen. 1104 nimmt die verschiedenen Spielarten des Metals auf, die ich vorhin beschrieben habe. Das ruhige Intro, dann das thrashige Riff, dann gibt es einen fast pop-rockigen Mittelteil und dann am Ende sogar ein bisschen Death Metal, was ich ja sonst eher nicht so bevorzuge. Mit welchen Bands würdet ihr gerne auftreten? Was wäre euer persönliches Wunschkonzert? Für mich persönlich kann ich sagen, ich glaube, ich würde sehr gerne mal mit Fates Warning zusammenspielen. Denn ich bin der Meinung, das würde auch vom Stil her ganz gut zusammenpassen. Headliner wären in dem Fall natürlich Fates Warning. Und äh, es wäre für uns eine große Ehre, für Fates Warning eröffnen zu dürfen. Also, Fates Warning... 
Warum sollte deine Oma Level Fields lieben? Tja, dazu müsste man erstmal wissen, handelt es sich um eine traditionelle Oma mit Kittelschürze und Dutt oder ist es eine moderne Oma in Lederhosen und einem schnittigen Auto? Für die traditionelle Oma würde ich sagen, wir alle in Level Fields sind natürlich ausgesprochen nette Herren im besten Alter, mit denen man sich wundervoll unterhalten kann und da findet sich bestimmt auch was für die traditionelle Oma. Für die moderne Oma würde ich sagen, kauf dir die CD, hör dir die Musik an und da ist bestimmt auch was für dich dabei. Es gibt ruhige Passagen, es gibt wilde Passagen, ganz nach Geschmack. Deswegen können eigentlich alle Omas Level Fields lieben. Wer schreibt die Texte, wer macht die Musik? Alan Tecchio schreibt alle Texte und damit auch alle Gesangsmelodien. Die Musik steht hier in meiner Kreativzentrale. Ihr seht hier hinter mir steht so ein bisschen was rum. Das ist das ganze analoge Zeugs, das auch zum Einsatz gekommen ist, aber eher selten. Für alles andere drehe ich mal die Kamera. Hier findet sich alles, was ich brauche. Die Erinnerung an die Virgin Steel Tour mit Poverty's No Crime, meine alten Verstärker, aber wo tatsächlich alles entsteht, ist hier. Auf meinem Rechner, Cubase und der Camper Amp, der wirklich sehr gute Dienste leistet. Hier entstehen die Riffs, hier entstehen die Songs und wenn ich alles fertig habe als Demo, verschicke ich das. Das geht dann direkt an Alan Tecchio, der dann die Gesangsmelodie da drauf setzt und an unseren Schlagzeuger Theo, der das Schlagzeug dazu entwickelt und natürlich an den Bassisten Clint Arendt, der dann seine Spuren dazu einspielt. Das heißt also, wir sind tatsächlich eine reine Internetband, die noch niemals zusammen im Proberaum gestanden haben. Das würde ich natürlich gerne ändern, aber es ist aufgrund der räumlichen Distanz schwierig. Vielen Dank Stormbringer für dieses Interview. Wir sehen uns irgendwann mal. Bis dann. Tschüss.